Okay, this is uh, being addicted to female uh, <clears throat> attention is miserable. This is a question I got from uh, Dahir Amy. And yeah, it is miserable when you're a slave to female attention. I was like that for decades. And it sucks. And you go home and you're like, man, I just feel so weak. Like, why am I chasing this, this vagina so strong? Why, do, why can a face... Even it's a beautiful face, but there's many beautiful things. Sunset, nature. I don't, I don't start trying to hump nature or I don't start lusting after nature. Why is it that I'm lusting after this female face, you know? And um, it's, it's just a, it, it, it sucks to be a victim to that, you know? So we're going to talk about that. So here's what he wrote. I found your channel recently. I think your channel is one of the best channels on semen retention on YouTube. Yeah, see, I, I make these videos for people that that they can capture something in these videos because these aren't mainstream semen retention videos. And so, um, yeah, I need I need to hear that this is uh, resonating with, with people because otherwise I don't feel to make them, you know. So, cool. I appreciate that. Um, I, moved from, I moved from a country that gave me zero attention to the UK that provided me with countless attention from women because I didn't get <laughs> I'm getting bit by mosquitoes again because I didn't get used to such incredible amount of attention I became addicted to it when I started to get it and I still am to be honest uh, however no I, I realize I understand no amount of of attraction that I get from a female would satiate my pathological need for this female attention but I think my obsession is driven so he thinks the reason he, he he's really obsessed with getting this female attention is because he didn't get enough attention in his childhood due to being raised in a broken family broken room it would be great if you could dedicate another video about this topic, particularly the link between not getting attention in childhood and the hunger to seek it out in adulthood. Thanks, mate. Thanks, man. I thought somebody else also, um, somebody else, uh, Moo, Moo was also wondering about this. He says, um, if you had any advice for me, uh, for not getting trapped, <clears throat> you know, stuck in this trap of wanting constant attention from women and how to stay grounded and calm when I'm talking to a, a girl, I'd appreciate it. All right. Yeah, that's a factor for sure. If we didn't, I, I, I'm one of them. If there was, I had a, a, a really strong female deficit of female attention when uh, I was growing up. Uh, number one, because of family uh, my mom just, she just, you know, didn't have it. Couldn't, just didn't have it for whatever karmic reason. It's not her fault, but there's consequences. And then, and I also didn't, um, I didn't get a lot. Of, I just thought I was ugly my whole life. And I was insecure and I was on, growing, growing up in school, I was on these hardcore pharmaceutical drugs, you know. So I'd go to sleep in class and then people would, Oh man, it was just a disaster, you know. I, I was just—I felt weak too. Like I couldn't—I didn't have the vibrance I have now, like I, at all. I was just kind of like—I mean, I was on Haldol. I was just, you know, like a, a walking zombie. And you know, kids are cruel, especially nowadays. I think they were better back then, but nevertheless, I didn't get a lot of play. Okay, that's what I'm saying. So when I, like I shared before, when I went to Brazil. I'm like the guy here that he said he went to UK. And then India, same. I mean, it was just like, whoa, you know? But I could never get enough to satisfy me. And so he, he's asking like, yeah, it's, it's okay. <clears throat> yeah, it has something to do with childhood. But see, understanding that the solution isn't going to be found. This is why therapy can only go so far. We need to transcend. Understanding, having a, a, a mental or psychological understanding and grip on, you know, why certain things happen. 
it's it's a very basic uh, thing. And I'm not knocking therapy. That can be useful at uh, up to a certain point. But to get to the transcendence, we got to go beyond the human self that is affected by this stuff. You see, he he has to get satiated inside by. Um, by your own self. You got to drink the nectar from your own self. You see, this requires a spiritual practice because this is what a meditation spiritual practice is designed to do. Our attention starts to go inside and realize this, you can say, calm, spacious uh, presence that we are. And then the attention stays on that. And then you get more grounded in it. You know, the mind, your um, human construct gets more grounded in this, um, this consciousness. And, and, and it's just like, it's like it wa- washes this human construct clean. And then you don't have, um, you don't have these <clears throat> insecurities and stuff. Uh, somebody who was talking about Mu, I wanted to say also about Yeah, not getting grounded. See, when I used to talk to girls, yeah, man, I would be so nervous. Like when I'm talking to them, I just, I would, the pressure would be on. I couldn't articulate. I didn't know why at the time. I just knew I was super uncomfortable, especially if they were good looking. And then double, especially if they looked like they were interested in me. (laughs) If they were interested in me, I would crash it immediately. My insecurity and nervousness would just... Yeah, they wouldn't be interested anymore, you know. Now, why? It comes from a couple of reasons. Number one, something craved it so bad. Like, my identity was really stuck on getting approval and validation from a girl. And so, I, I, was, I was wanting that so bad. See, when you want something so bad like that, it can't help but uh, go the other way and make you uh, unstable because it's like your whole life and well-being is contingent upon getting this inordinate need met. So that was my problem. I would just get so excited. I'm like, oh shit, like, like she likes me. Like, oh man, like, and I couldn't, I couldn't flow. I'd be just be, I just didn't know what to say. You know, I was a mess. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad that's done. Jesus. Um, what was the other thing though? Because we're talking about why we're not grounded. That's one reason why we're not grounded. Um, the other thing is, if we really want something, if the lust, sex addict, you know, tendency, dopamine craving self is wanting something from her, either sex, attention, um, you know, validation, whatever wanting her, you know, wanting to continue this relationship, wanting her phone number, you know, just wanting to, you're wanting something from her. You're, you're not, if a guy you're talking to, if you're talking to a guy, that's not going to happen, you know, usually. You're, you're just, you're chill, and so you can flow. When you're chill, you're relaxed, you flow. You don't want nothing from them. You're, there's no agenda. But with a girl, you see, there's, it's like high stakes, you know? And, uh, and it, a lot of times it's subconscious. So you got you to gotta be able to, you got to see this stuff. Because I'm telling you, if you didn't want anything from them on conscious or subconscious level, you'd just be relaxed. Because when you don't want something, you're, just, you're, just, you're here. You're just here. You want to give them something. That's all. You don't want anything from them, but your, your higher nature is looking, what can I give them? Uh, there's a St. Francis. It's called St. Francis Prayer. And it says, seek to comfort rather than be comforted and to understand rather than be understood. This is high level stuff, man. This will, this will dissolve any ego or selfish tendencies we have uh, lurking, you know. But to, to, to get to that state, we got to first realize these, these insecure tendencies and strong need for approval and all that stuff. So that then when, when, when there's consciousness of that, we don't, we don't keep acting out on it. it. Like it comes up and we're like, okay, yeah, it's up again. Even you can share it. You, 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 want to, you want to do something high level? Share it with the person in the moment that it's happening. That's fun. Do that. Say, look, I don't know how you're going to take this. I'm not, I'm not your, you're not my therapist, but I just got to be honest because I'm really practicing being honest in my life. I don't want to waste my life. 
and at the risk of looking stupid or being embarrassed, I'm being honest right now, and I'm telling you, you know, you're, you're really, <laughs> I don't know how to be uh, comfortable in your presence right now, you know, and it's not you, it's me, tell him, say like, I'm just all stirred up, man, like, damn, like, I don't know what it is, you know, but you're really, you're bringing this stuff out, and, um, you know, I appreciate it, and I understand if it scares you, but I just, I mean, it is what it is, you know, you probably can see it anyway, so I'm just telling you, do that. Do that and let me know how that goes. I used to do. I can do stuff like that. I don't have to do it now because I already did it. <laughs> but do that. And I bet she'll appreciate it. And if she doesn't, good. You want to get rid of her anyway. Any, any, any authentic being is going to appreciate that level of honesty and authenticity. Okay? And number one. Number two, when you share like that, it's going to dissolve it. And I bet, I know 100%. I'll sign it. I'll sign a contract saying it so that you're going to be more relaxed and more grounded after you do that. And I bet she, 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 she never heard that level of authenticity from anyone, her husband or, or boyfriend or, or father or anything. Because who, who does that? Have you heard it? Have you heard anybody do, do it on that level? You know, especially when you just meet somebody. That's even more fun. If you know somebody for a while, it's like, okay, you develop some trust and so you can be more vulnerable. <laughs> Not really, but I'm, most people don't, period. But I'm just saying. But to first meet somebody and, and share that level of honesty, that's good stuff, man. This is why I'm on the planet. This is what I want to do. Like, like, this, is, this is real life. This is living life. Not living life in some artificial counterfeit ego self. Like this is, this is real life, th this type of thing, you know. And so I'm sharing that with people who, who that resonates with. So, all right, I think, do we do good? Uh, that's what it is. Don't worry about if, if, uh, where it comes from. Like, that doesn't matter. You, you get right inside with yourself, and, and this, this, this higher self will be your mother and your dad, and give, it, it will give you everything you didn't get when you were younger. So you don't have to worry about that. And... Um, and semen retention is a great tool for your spiritual practice. And let me know if you want me to make more spiritual practice videos. And, and uh, I'll do it because that's the whole aim. That's beyond semen retention. I'm going to make a video about beyond semen retention. Or what's higher than semen retention. Because the spiritual practice is where it's at. This is what liberates us. You see? These other things, diet and lifestyle practices and good habits and semen retention. These are tools to facilitate uh, and make our spiritual practice more efficient. Spiritual practice is where it's at. And there's many. Depends on your temperament and character what you're going to resonate with. You know. Okay, good. Have a good day. Talk to you soon.